Toyota Dino Authority today. We have a Toyota Tundra with a twin turbo six cylinder. No, it's not a Ford EcoBeast. No, it's not a V. It's a straight six and it's a twin turbo. They're rated at 537 foot pounds of torque at the crank, 389 horsepower at the crank. We're gonna walk through the steps of showing you this, showing you what power it actually makes to the rear wheels before we get started. And then we're gonna walk through showing you step by step by step as we tune this Tundra. Is it a beast or do they just both? We just finished running our baseline passes, which means we didn't do anything to the truck. All we did at this point was put it on the dyno and run it, because we need to know where is it before we start tuning. This truck is very consistent. If you do the math, we should have somewhere between 310 and 330 horse at the wheels, but being in this business long enough, I know that they don't make that. In this case, this truck was very consistent. We had a 298, 295, 294, and a 302 horsepower. So all of those are within one or two or three horsepower the entire time that it went down and through each one of its passes. Started out making about 320, it peaked out at about 345 foot-pounds of torque. So let's see where we go from here, but we know what we're gonna do at this point. Now we start working on fuel curve. Once we get that fuel curve correct, then we can go back and we can work on that boost and we can make the boost nice and smooth and solid and give this customer more power down low where they can use it with this truck because every time we listen to a pass, and you're gonna hear it on this video, it would come on kind of lazy, then it would come up and at the very end it would just shoot. So when it finally starts to make turbo and boost, it starts to shoot through. We're gonna see if we can't bring that shooting back a little sooner, give it a bit more of a smoother curve and make this a Toyota Tundra to be reckoned with. Well, step number one, he came up against a rev limiter, I think. I can't tell exactly, but he got it going. The thing flew through, like we knocked off a bunch of time and then it, it seemed to put the brakes on. So he'll have to find out why it did that and he'll work back through it again. But it, it's over before it begins now. It just goes so quick. So we'll check and see what's going. But right now we're, we just went to 411 foot pounds, 321 horsepower. But just when it started to make horsepower, it kind of nosed over. It hit some sort of a uh, speed limiter. Or, or I'm not exactly sure, but that's why we have Wally. He takes care of that. So we said the torque curve seems really lazy. Look over my shoulder. The torque curve is no longer lazy. This was what we had when the truck came in. Look at it, it comes up, it falls over, it decides it's going to go again. But it's really lazy no matter what if you take the average here. Look at the torque curve now. It's like climbing a mountain and then coming up. But what we need to do now is just extend this out a little further. But as far as making the truck into a truck, when you drive that, that's a lot more truck. It's going to be able to step on the gas and just go, as opposed to step on the gas, wait a minute, think about it, and then take off. And this time, when he stepped on the gas, the thing just took off. It immediately went through, and we think that the driver's door was open a little bit, or the hood was open, and it actually shut it down right as we got going. But if we take a look at the immediate results on the first step of tuning, we're pretty happy.
Now we're up to 519 foot pounds, 325 horse. At the wheels, at the wheels. Okay, so now I've figured it out. The transmission has a speed limiter in each gear, so it wants to shift. So you can hear it come up, shift, come up, shift, come up, shift. So off the bottom, we're consistently making 500 and some foot pounds of torque. Like we're now at 540 foot pounds of torque. We're consistently making way over 300 horsepower, just having a hard time keeping it nice and smooth in one gear. It wants to shift through the gears on its own. It just keeps making more and more torque off the bottom. And our horsepower number is fantastic. We're, we're very happy with 364 horsepower, but the truck wants to shift. A dyno pass is typically done in one gear. The Toyota right now just doesn't want to stay in that one gear. So Wally's just working with the boost, working with the fueling, making sure that throughout the entire range, he still keeps nice solid boost and fueling and doesn't get too much timing or timing spikes in there. Pretty happy with the way it's going so far. We're fighting the transmission a bit, but that's okay. We're at a dyno shop, and as we progress in later years of technology, different computers come out with different ideas of what they should and shouldn't do on the dyno. All right, modern vehicles have a lot of logic tables built into them. And so what we did today was walk through getting our boost curve, getting our fueling, make sure the timing, there's no knock, everything is safe, it's good, and we've got a lot more power than we did before. Some of the logic tables inside the computer are saying, hey, this truck's making a lot more power. I don't think I wanna keep it in this gear. I'm at a certain speed, I've overcome, I'm just gonna to shift to the next gear. It grabbed the next gear and it said the same thing to itself, holy smokes, this is something I've not seen before, so it grabs the next gear. So it was shifting through the gears. The beginning portion of it, we still get a nice overlay of what was happening in the same gear when we are um, apples to apples on this. So we can take a look at what we where we were and how lazy it was. And the big thing when you're standing here and you're listening, when he first would step on it when it came in, it would just bog out for a minute, just blah. And then you had to wait till almost 3,500 RPM before it did anything. And then it would shoot ahead like an arrow. And then by that point, it's all done. It's that's, there's there was no more. Now, he grabs a hold of it, it comes on hard, but at a certain point, the transmission and the logic inside the computer says, hey, I want to grab another gear because I'm going so quick, I think I can pull the next gear, the next gear, and it'll actually shift twice as it's going through. Let's show you the bottom end and the beginning and how much better that portion of it is, then do a quick comparison. So here we have where we were before, which is a very lazy, lazy curve. It's nice and flat and round, but it's, it's sort of like, you know, this is your great grandfather's curve. This is not where a young guy like the owner of this, Eric, wants to have this truck. Up here is what he wants. He wants to be able to step on this takeoff and have this truck absolutely pull all the way through. Now, unfortunately, when we get here, it shifts a gear and then it shifts another gear and it still maintains way more torque than it ever had before. And it's two gears up. When we see the horsepower curve, same thing. It's going to follow the torque. And um, that's one of the difficulties that you have sometimes when you're doing the dyno. Some vehicles will not stay in gear. And you can spend hours reprogramming the computer and defeating the logic and getting through it. And if you have to, you do. If you feel like your tuning's not good enough and you feel like you just couldn't get a good enough sample, that's what you do. Today, we are looking at this and we are like, Let's get this thing unstrapped because we really want to take the customer for a drive because we think it's going to be very impressive. Based on each one of the passes we took, we made 411, then we made 480, then we made 495, 500, 540, 550 foot-pounds of torque off the very bottom where you want your truck to go. This is no longer a lazy boast of a vehicle. It's now a beast of a Toyota.